Hello everyone, um, this is Paul Sweeney. I am the Chief Strategy Officer at Webio and I was invited to give this presentation at the European Chatbot Summit there in Edinburgh 2023. And I'd just like to go over that presentation with you and maybe share some of the things I shared with the crew on the day. So I was asked to give a presentation on how uh, conversational AI was delivering benefits for industry today. And so our example was conversational messaging uh, delivering today for the credit and collections business. So first of all, establishing who we do business with today, we do business for some of the very largest uh, companies in the UK, such as the Very Group Studio Retail. We do business with some of the largest utility companies like Anglian Water and very specialist credit and collections companies such as Oplo um, and Hoist Finance and Snap and people like that. So we're very much a focused company and we specialize in a particular sector. And I guess one of the rewards for that specialization is we've garnered a number of um, awards for our use of technology, for the use of innovation, for um, best customer experience. But I'd also draw your attention to two specific awards for the use of AI in um, best use of responsibility and ethics in AI and responsibility or, or um, best use of application and consumer uh, service application. Um, so by focusing, we've delivered a lot of benefit for, for uh, companies and that's been recognized by the industry. So that kind of establishes why we're, we're here to, to talk about the thing. And I start by saying that conversations about money are very difficult. Uh, the conversations we have with others, so for, for instance, our spouses, we often don't share the full extent of the debt that we're in with even our closest and dearest partners because of the, the difficulty of sharing that with somebody else. Um, we also don't share it with the wider community of people that we know, be it friends, neighbors, or other people to maybe get advice or get some help. And even I would, I would say we don't even have a good conversation with ourselves uh, to recognize how we're in a situation and we need to deal with it and that it can't go on, etc. So the nature of this kind of conversation is very difficult in all its dimensions. And that leads to anxiety. So feelings of anxiety are like endemic with people who are falling behind on their payments. And it leads us to try and get ourselves out of situations by making promises that can't be kept. We'll be on a phone call um, we're asked to make a payment or make a promise to pay at some future time. And just to move that conversation along, we will make a number of promises. We might even believe it in the moment, but it leads us to do things that aren't um, keepable. Um, we, we begin to withdraw from situations. So emotionally, we disengage, we withdraw from contact, and that only makes the situation worse. Because we have to have this conversation, not only with that one company we owe money to, but usually if we owe money to one company, we owe it to multiple other companies. And that means that we have to have the same traumatic conversation over and over again with multiple parties. And people, rightly so, uh, find it difficult to kind of put themselves through that conversation over and over again with others. So we don't engage and we start to accumulate late payments, we start to accumulate fines, we start to have credit impacts on our credit rating, and ultimately we end up paying more and more interest. So financially, it's not a very good decision. And we suffer more shame, more fear of being judged if we uh, approach others with our issue, and more and more mounting pressure, because ultimately at some level we know that this has to be resolved. But we think that if people actually knew our real position, the full and true extent of our uh, exposure here, we think that people would make demands on us that we would never be able to, to meet, i.e. it would just be a cascading failure throughout our lives. So the longer we can put off having to reveal our true position, uh, the better we think it's going to be. 
And that's on top of issues that already exist of financial literacy. Uh, a lot of people don't understand the terms and conditions or the effects of not meeting their obligations in terms of loans or repayments or bills. Um, on top of situations where people may have a lower level of reading skills and comprehension than you maybe uh, would guess. And that's also on top of the fact that many people have disabilities, be that intellectual or physical disabilities, that form further barriers to them addressing these issues. So for the company, well, they've also suffered uh, huge increases in the volume of interactions they have to deal with, especially during COVID. Um, companies had to interact with just a quantum more of people than they had to before because everybody had to make rearrangement conversations. So many of our customers actually switched off their phones entirely and just run their operations over messaging. And that was a bit revolutionary for them. I mean, it was, uh, they would never have done that without the, um, the COVID, but it did allow them to actually deal with the volumes. Now, post COVID, were faced with um, skill shortages and availability of skills, skill staff. So we not only have to figure out how to automate conversations, but we have to figure out how to automate conversations for agents too, to give them automations that help them be more productive because we have more volume, but fewer people. Management, top management, um, always want, or now want, um, credit departments and debt collection agencies to move towards a full digital strategy. So full digital collections and messaging and remote working in combination with one another are a vital part of that. So that's more pressure on, on the company. And now once you have people in messaging, what you're trying to figure out is who can pay, like who's trying to pay right now, who will pay in the future, and maybe even, this is a strange one, who shouldn't pay? There are many types of companies out there that really should be figuring out, well, my bill isn't the most important bill that this person should be paying. And if they pay my bill, it puts them into a level of vulnerability and stress that they shouldn't be in. And therefore, it's incumbent on companies to try and figure out what the mental, emotional states of their customers are and what their potential vulnerabilities are, and to make every effort they can to establish that as quickly as possible. And companies, you know, they, they're always looking to try and figure out, are these customers going to be good long-term customers? Um, and even if people fall behind, it takes them far, uh, far fewer days to actually recover their, their position to get work, to get money flowing again, and to catch up with their bills. That's happening faster than it has before. So really, we need to treat people as valued customers over the long term, because it's very difficult to win a customer in the first place, and we really need to try and retain them um, for as long as possible. So brand impacts of how we interact with customers are becoming more and more important. So given all these challenges, conversational messaging really fits this kind of change agenda today. Um, and that's why the Webio stack has always been built with this in mind. Like from the get go, we always believe that you need a specialist API for credit and collections companies so that we can get the data in to a conversation. There's no point in having a conversation with someone when they want to know what's my balance, what's my next payment date, can I pay half that, please? These kind of conversation um, bits of data need to be available for you to answer that conversation. If you can't get access to that data, it's very difficult to automate the conversation. So automation really depends on you having a very good API, being able to get to that data and having a vision of how you're going to get live data into this system to answer these conversations. And Webio has built a very specific bot framework to reflect the specific 
um, sets of circumstances that people are in when they're trying to run a credit collections conversation. So we allow you to set up specific rules, specific type of policies that are niche to this core area. And all this sits on top of uh, a custom large language model. And so you might have heard of ChatGPT, Web, uh, or ChatGPT, uh, GPT-4. And it really looks like it's doing some crazy, miraculous things. And it's doing some fantastic things. But at an enterprise level, you really need to be certain that the kind of questions you're asking, or the questions customers are asking, you're able to respond to, and that those responses are correct. So uh, we've been working for over two years now on developing the right architecture so that your data goes all the way through, you use your own custom model, and you're able to run a chat GPT type conversation without having to go out and get all that information from a third party. It's your data, your training, your labels, and your own large language model. And we think that's important because it's the data journey that you need to protect. You need to make sure it's fully compliant and auditable all the way down. And you also need to think about the fact that um, when you're trying to implement this kind of a project, your own staff availability is going to be limited. Uh, we've seen over and over again, people in digital transformation projects have a lot of draws on their resources and staff availability, particularly technical staff, is just not where you'd want it to be if you were to implement this yourselves. So you need a partner who's going to help you implement that and get to the value. And we'll come to some of those learnings in a while. So some examples of um, conversations, just uh, small examples of, of, of why this matters. So take a message such as, I'd love to pay, but my wife is in hospital. Uh, the first part of this message is great. I'd love to pay. Um, many systems would just go, great, let's push this to payments. But the second part of that message is really important. My wife is in hospital. And you have to understand that my wife is a close relation. Uh, in hospital is an indication of potential health vulnerability. But it might also mean that um, this person's wife is just visiting a hospital uh, or they work in a hospital. So that inflects what the next question should be to clarify what that situation is. I can't pay this. Um, at the beginning of a conversation, you might say, um, I can't pay this means I don't have money available. I don't have available funds. I, I, I just don't have it. Later in a conversation, it might be, I can't pay this because the gateway isn't working, my credit card isn't being accepted, something's wrong technically. So I can't pay this means different things depending on where it's occurring in your conversation. I'm just off my holiday and don't have any money. Uh, this person isn't just back from Spain, having had a great time and now uh, saying, oh, I have no money. They're saying they were on a payment holiday. So they were on a payment holiday and they still don't have any money because the hours that they were expecting haven't come through yet. So they probably will be able to pay, but they just need more time and another schedule, uh, a repayment schedule kind of renegotiated. So even in small snippets of conversation, the levels of ambiguity can be quite high and you really need to understand the context of credit, and com credit collections to be able to correctly parse these. So getting to value with using the conversational technology really is um, a matter of starting really simple. So we had one customer who had a lot of failure rates in uh, a form application process, and it was around capturing a date. Um, so something like, when would you like your repayment date to be? Please say it in the format of 22nd 06, 2023, let's say. And people would just get it wrong. The failure rate was around five or six percent. And that actually really matters. So putting in a date entity, being able to just take any kind of format and turn it into a universal format 
really dramatically reduce that failure rate. So one small ability to understand what someone was saying, a date, type, doesn't matter how they said it, next Friday, Friday 13th, the Friday next, Friday at the end of the month, the date entity is able to pick that up and turn that into a format that the rest of the system can understand. And the net effect of that is that your number of pass-throughs, completely automated pass-throughs to like a, a, an authorization was much higher. So obviously that then incentivizes you to start adding more entities such as names, addresses, numbers, phone numbers, and custom entities like your own specific customer ID numbers or order numbers or product numbers. And now you're gathering all the kind of raw materials that allow you to automate your conversations and you move to a bigger chunk of conversation. So these larger processes, uh, if you're able to capture a name, an address, a phone number, you're well on your way to contact, um, full, getting full contact details. So you could have a process that enables you to capture contact details or capture contact details that you don't have today from customers. You could use the same kind of information in identification and verification check. Again, the name, address, special number, all this can be designed into your conversational flow. And then you start getting into larger flows like budgeting. Is it possible to run a budgeting process digitally? Well, yes, it is. Traditionally, you may have an agent having a direct one to one conversation with somebody and that could take you up to 40 minutes. And that's a very expensive way, but it also doesn't scale. So we've designed a ID and V, uh, sorry, a budgeting process review where you can automate the collection of that information. And again, it's very conversational in nature, so it's easy to do, it's sustainable over a length of time, and it has pretty good rates of, um, of completion. And so I guess just w with regards to chunks, um, you're able to now move into larger chunks of conversations. And there's a concept called uh, long short-term memory so if I take your name and address at the beginning of a conversation and I need that information for your, say, delivery information or where do I send this letter to, that information is remembered in the conversation. You don't have to ask it for it again. The system remembers, we've captured that information earlier, we don't need it again. So working in this kind of chunking of conversations really allows you to not ask for information over and over again to only ask for the bits that you need before you go to the next part of the conversation. And you might use this as well in, in, in the processes of an agent, uh, like an intelligent agent handing off to another intelligent agent or intelligent agent handing off to a human. So you might get to a certain part of the conversation and go, actually, I'm not confident about what to do next in this conversation, so I'm going to hand it over to a human. And then the human agent can assess the conversation and figure out what the next step is to ask this customer. But once they've finished with that part, then they too can pass that conversation over to another intelligent agent to complete the conversation or move it to the next step. So it's best to think about this as automations, automations with people, and then automations with people back to, to intelligent agents. And this is all ultimately about specifying for the custom interactions that your customers need. So the terms that you want, the, the timings you want, the phrasings you want, etc. All this is designable through, through the Webio um, stack. And you'll notice now that this particular approach to getting to value is about starting really simple then layering in a little bit more complexity, layering in a little bit more complexity later on. So if you try and start to design a complex system from scratch, you'll fail. Complex systems are complex, prone to failure. But if you're layering in the conversational elements over time, what you'll find is you get to complexity in a much more stable and reliable fashion. And we found that over and over again with projects. And that's why kind of getting to value is much more about starting simple, layering in, layering in, layering in. 
And so we've seen dramatic impacts with our customers. We've seen a three to five times uh, X impact in um, collection rates using digital messaging and bots. That's obviously massive in an industry such as ours. Um, and, and that will change in terms of 20% in one part, 100% in another, 300% in another part. It depends on the particular part of the process that you're, you're aiming at. But overall, the quantum of benefits you get from automating is just massive. And so with our customers, we've seen automation rates of around like 75%, 77%. I mean, this is really massive um levels of automation using bots and the uplift with all this automation you're collecting more uh you're collecting more money at the end of the day and what we would posit is that by doing this well doing this in a well-designed manner you're actually getting um more money you're collecting it at lower cost and you're getting it with customers feeling better about the whole process and I know that that sounds like, well, that sounds kind of too good to be true, but we have the customer proof points. Like this is over and over again, this just works, but you have to do it kind of in, a, in the correct way, in a layered fashion, getting to the customers and getting more and more complicated and complex as you go. So speaking about complexity, um, really in the in the kind of Q1 2023 is there any bigger story out there than chat GPT and the large language models the LLMs as they're called so what's all this about well first of all it is a massive transformation there's no doubt about it this is the kind of layer of innovation that comes around every 10 or 20 years depending on how you want to think about it the last big jump I saw like this was probably um, the jump to cloud around 2000. Case could be made that mobile um, interaction was another such kind of innovation leap. Some people would say social was that. I think social maybe didn't make the leap that it was meant to. Um, but definitely this kind of AI machine learning revolution is a transformational change to business. And what's, what kind of things is it going to do? Well, it's going to make conversations very easy to turn into multilingual conversations. So when you design it in one language, it will, um, without a whole bunch of effort, be available in other languages fairly easily. It will handle text input questions, voice input, visual input mechanisms. So I think if you are thinking, how can I um, get the kind of services that I maybe couldn't get to or afford or didn't have the resources to get to before, this is a very powerful way of getting into these kind of interaction capabilities. I fully expect people to be able to, you know, uh, take a picture of a bill, send it in, have that automatically scanned understand what's in that bill and be able to get a response about what's happening or even today you can drop a document into a, a specialist service and just ask it questions like what's happening in this document and it, it will tell you so there's kind of really big transformations in how we handle these kind of um, um, data um, and i think that large language models will evolve into the state where they're available at enterprise level for every company um, and they will be safe and they will have guardrails and they will have all the safety features. It's gonna take a little bit of time for everybody to get there, but I don't think you can ignore it. Um, it, it is one of those kind of fundamental shifts. Uh, for today, I think it's, it's pretty obvious that you have to basically still make sure that a human has eyes on something um, if you're pushing it out to customers, um, unless you've got really good architecture in place to capture and test for, um, you know, false 
false positives, false negatives, hallucinations, and things like that. I think we need uh, to make sure that you've got a good layer of middleware in place to make sure that the LLMs are acting uh, the way they can. You can't just use them um, without guardrails. It, it's just not appropriate. And I think the overall value focus is on intelligent assistance for everybody. It's an intelligent assistant for your customer, an intelligent assistant for your uh, customer agent, an intelligent assistant for your supervisors, for your salesperson. Everyone in your company is going to have an intelligent assistant. Today, um, your marketing salespeople are using some form of ChatGPT to generate content for marketing materials, emails, um, even blog posts. Your developers are looking at parsing their code on a, something like Microsoft Copilot, GitHub Copilot. Um, so everyone in your company is going to have a virtual assistant and an intelligent assistant. And that has been the kind of vision for Webio for the last five years is we've always believed that everyone's going to have an intelligent assistant. And we've just focused specifically on an intelligent assistant for the credit collection situation. So if you're in that space and you're running conversations with your customers around difficult conversations about money, then we've designed a stack specifically for that. And that's why we're able to deliver the kind of impacts that we've been talking about in this presentation. So I hope that that gave you a sense of what we were talking about at the European Chatbot Summit. Um, there was many good examples from other companies around how they're getting value from conversational interaction, people from the insurance business, from the life insurance and health insurance, from large scale retailers. So there's many different industries getting benefits from this today. If you have any questions about what you think uh, you might need or just interested in the area of conversation LAI, hit me up. I'm on the socials at Paul Sweeney, or you can hit up at WebioHQ on Twitter or find us on LinkedIn. Take care, everyone.